back to The Daily Poem here in the Close Reads Podcast Network. I'm David Kern. Today's poem is by Maurice Manning. He was born in 1966 and is a poet from Kentucky. His first collection of poems, Lawrence Booth's Book of Visions, was awarded the Yale Younger Poets Award, chosen by W.S. Merwin. And his collection, The Common Man, was one of the two finalists for the 2011 Pulitzer Prize in Poetry. The poem that I'm going to read today is actually a new poem, which is coming in a forthcoming collection called Rail Splitter. And I discovered it in the most recent issue of a magazine called Garden and Gun, where they do a feature on Maurice Manning. And then they publish this poem, which is called On Silence. And I wanted to share it with you. So shout out to Garden and Gun, where you can find this particular poem. And make sure you check out Maurice Manning's new collection, Rail Splitter. And this is how this poem goes. Poetry is the art of silence. The art of knowing when to stop a word or phrase and let it hang like a sheet billowing on the line. And the sudden or unexpected silence goes hand in hand with what is said in words or the flowery natural phrase. Beginning with the idiom and moving to the metaphor while following the stark rhythms of thought as they proceed and follow is elegance. A wave of the hand for dancers to come forth and dance and give the scene a fluid movement. I see it all in a grand entrance, meaning I see it as entrancing, wrapped and enthralling all there is. But what in fact or dainty figure is the scene? People in dark and bright attire coming closely together for a dance, for a spinning, exultant reel? I made myself present for such events, yet also removed myself to step away, to pause and reflect. And stepping away, I learned my candor. I learned how to pass my time in a phrase, in a measured phrase of poetry. And that is where I've tried to live. In the Garden and Gun piece on Maurice Manning, there's a call-out where it quotes Manning as saying this, Poetry is a means to wonder. Finding the answer isn't the point. Expressing the wonder is the point. This is not, I don't think, a unique perspective among poets. I think that most poets would say that they're not particularly interested in pursuing a point or an angle. They're pursuing a curiosity. But they're pursuing the things that they are wondering at, the things in the world that that drive their imaginations. Keats talks about this. And I think this particular poem by Maurice Manning gets at that sentiment. In a sense, there's even some irony in silence being the pursuit of wonder. That in the silence you're expressing wonder, or, it, or the silence enables you to express wonder, I think is perhaps a better way of putting it. Speaking of the poem, he talks about how poetry is the art of silence. And then at the end, he talks about how poetry is learning to pass time in a phrase, in a measured phrase of poetry. And I love the concept that measured poetry is poetry that employs silence. Again, poets have been writing about this forever. You can read about this in Wendell Berry's great book on William Carlos Williams' poetry and the nature of the line in poetry. But the line is what it is because of absence, because of silence, because at the end of that word, at the end of that phrase, is a stop, is a moment of silence. And as you read, you have to interpret the amount of silence that goes into it, and the poet's trying to communicate a degree of silence. And it is measure that is determined by silence, um, and also that determines the degree of silence. In a poem, when you look at this poem by Manning, it's visually quite lovely, I think. Poetry is the art of silence is the first line. And the second line is the art of knowing when to stop is the end of the second line. So you you know, there's just a moment where it feels like silence should be there, but the, the line actually continues. That's an enjambment there. The art of knowing when to stop a word or phrase and let it hang like a sheet billowing on the line. I love that, that first sentence there. The first four lines make up that sentence. And then this is a poem that, that clearly embodies what he's expressing, as all great poems do. But if you want to think more about the nature of poetry um, and you and you want to Just read some really lovely poetry that embodies the language of of a place. Maurice Manning's a great one to turn to. So, I'll read it one more time. Maurice Manning's On Silence. And again, make sure you go check out the piece in Garden and Gun. I want to give them credit. And then also make sure you look for his forthcoming collection, Rail Splitter. Poetry is the art of silence. The art of knowing when to stop a word or phrase and let it hang like a sheet billowing on a line. 
And this sudden or unexpected silence goes hand in hand with what is said in words or the flowery natural phrase. Beginning with the idiom and moving to the metaphor, while following the stark rhythms of thought as they proceed and follow, is elegance. A wave of the hand for dancers to come forth and dance and give the scene a fluid movement. I see it all in a grand entrance, meaning I see it as entrancing, wrapped and enthralling all there is. But what, in fact or dainty figure, is the scene? People in dark and bright attire coming closely together for a dance, for a spinning, exultant reel? I made myself present for such events, yet also removed myself to step away to pause and reflect. And stepping away, I learned my candor. I learned how to pass my time in a phrase, in a measured phrase of poetry. And that is where I've tried to live. This has been The Daily Poem. Thanks for listening. Be back tomorrow with another poem for you. Thank you.